Welcome to the Lork. This is the continuation of a video series where we are discussing containers, Docker, Kubernetes, and VMware PKS with Mark Allenbach. In this video, Mark will discuss PKS network security with NSX-T. Let's get started. This is kind of giving you an idea of which Kubernetes objects we're doing integration with NSXT. So a common things inside Kubernetes is somebody might want something referred to as a separate namespace. If you're not familiar with Kubernetes, it's a little bit like having your own VLAN, okay, or, or VRF. So they would do a Kubernetes command, kubectuddle, create namespace. What happens? Well, you can see the details here in the table. If somebody went in and they wanted, as part of their application, they wanted to specify a series of firewall rules, they would do a Kubernetes create um, network policy. That's actually a manifest file. We're going to actually automatically go into NSXT and create a series of firewall sections. We're going to create a series of groups that are going to be used in my source in my destination fields of for my firewall rules. And then whatever they put in that network policy, we would automatically write the respective firewall rules that would support that network policy. When I'm deploying my application, I would do a service type of what's called load balancer. We'll automatically create a new virtual IP of VIP to the load balancer will automatically create a server pool that's going to include all of the containers that you specified when you created your load balancer service type inside your manifest file. If I needed an ingress controller, again, we will automatically write the ingress rules for you on the layer seven load balancer. So this is this integration that we're talking about. And everything that I've discussed here in this Kubernetes column, these are common objects, regardless of where you're running Kubernetes at, these object types is what your developers are using. They're using a namespace, which is going to give them their own layer two network. So they've got their own form of isolation. They're going to be writing network policies because, you know, our application developers are understanding we need firewalling done. So this is how they write their firewall rules. They're going to need either they'll use sometimes a load balance or sometimes an ingress controller. You need a way to be able to support these if you're going to spin up Kubernetes on your own. Okay, so you might be implementing a flannel or a calico or an, an Nginx to be able to handle these respective services. We're doing these services using NSXT. So this is when we start digging in a little bit more in firewalling. And, and I, I, I think we can all understand the importance of having some type of security solution in place. And firewalling in Kubernetes was introduced with this thing called network policies, which you just heard me speak about. It was released in production in Kubernetes in Kubernetes re release 1.7. Okay, we're up to 1.15, I believe now. So it's been around for a while. When you're looking at deploying a solution that is using cloud native, you've got a couple of ways that you could do security. You could use Kubernetes networking policies. That is a, a primitive type inside Kubernetes. It's a manifest file where you simply state what is your inbound traffic, your source, what's your destination, what service, what protocol, do you want to allow, deny, etc. However, we're starting to see that a lot of people from a security standpoint don't really want to trust the developers for how they're going to roll out security. So 
maybe instead they might decide that they're going to use a series of predefined labels. And, and this is getting a little bit deeper inside Kubernetes, but inside a Kubernetes manifest file, you could write these things called labels. The best analogy to use labels is labels are just like vSphere tags. Yeah, um, so, so I was just going to ask you exactly that. Are these labels tags? Um, if they, so are you saying that they are implemented as tags or they're analogous to tags? Both. Okay. Okay. So if they're implemented if as tags. NSXT, which, well, hold on. Which, NSXT okay. tags sit where? Not inside vSphere. Right. They're inside so we're NSXT talking, manager. So we're not talking vSphere tags. We're not talking vrops tags. We're not talking all the gazillion different types of tags that VMware has, but specifically we're talking NSX-T tags. Exactly. Great. Exactly. So yeah, I know that is kind of confusing. It's like, yeah. how many spots are we going to put tags on, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the the Kubernetes tags that are actually they're Kubernetes labels inside your Kubernetes manifest file. When if I go back to this slide here, when I have a manifest, I have a YAML file sitting over here on my computer and when I do my cube cuddle command I'm actually taking this manifest file and I'm, I'm pushing this manifest file to the Kubernetes API server. Inside that manifest file I have a series of labels. The NCP is going to take those labels that are coming into it and he's going to generate a corresponding tag inside NSXT manager and attach those tags to the objects that were inside um, your manifest file. Then do, do, do the NSX um, manager administrators control what those tags do? Exactly. So just like okay. now, now, this is where we go back to it's very similar to how we're doing stuff inside vSphere. Sometimes we would maybe make a group or we would we would do something based upon the presence or the absence of a tag on an object. In NSXT, we would use those tags as my source or my destination in a firewall rule which I've in turn, so I would use those tags to drop respective workloads into a thing called a security group. That security group would turn into my source or my destination in a firewall rule, which I've maybe as the security administrator have predefined in a security policy. So let's try to use an example because it's we've been kind of talking a little vaguely here. I'm going to, to come up as the security administrator, and again, it's just an example, to say, if you're deploying a containerized service that's a web service, let's say a, a web server, I'm going to say, I want you to put in this particular label. This a label would say, let's say, tier, and the value would be front end. And then I got another label called app, and you would say web. I would then use those two specific tags and I would say anything that has those tags falls into a respective security group that says these are my web servers. I've then pre-created policies that say if you're a web server, I'm going to allow 80 in 443 in. So the source would be any because they're coming from the internet. The destination would be my security group of my web servers. And then my policy would allow HTTP and HTTPS in. Hopefully that's making sense to everybody. You can kind of see how that's, that, that's coming together. This area, this specific area, when we talk about how to do security inside containerized services, 
is still, I'm going to say, a little bit in flux. And, and that would be a, a, a common discussion you would want to have with somebody that it has done this to say, how, how are you, customer A, implementing security? And you'll hear some of them say, we're using a combination of both. No, we're only using predefined labels, and I am forbidding the use of Kubernetes network policies, which you can do via Kubernetes, what's called RBOC, which is role-based access control. I could say, you know, these people aren't allowed to apply a network policy. Therefore, I'm forcing security to come up with using predefined labels. In the next video, Mark will discuss the NSX-T Container Network Interface. Join us in the next video to learn more.